Good morning, everyone, and you're watching News 3. Hannah, this is Tower TV. Oh, shoot. My bad. I need some more sleep. Well, we should get started on these announcements. Girls' soccer tryouts are after spring break. Monday, March 28th, will be 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the Fieldhouse. Tuesday, March 29th, and Wednesday, March 30th, will be 4 to 6 at Bree Stevens Field. Thursday, March 31st, will be 7 to 9 in the Fieldhouse. Teams will be posted at midnight that Thursday. Um, everyone can try out. Make sure you have your blue card. Heat Club wants everyone to know about the fundraiser called Miracle Minute. It's a fundraiser for American Cancer Society, Relay for Life. Here's Emily DeRussia from Key Club. Hi, I'm here to kick off your Miracle Minute, and your time starts now. We take any kind of donations, coin or paper. We'll find out what to do with it. All donations will go directly to Relay for Life, an organization created by the American Cancer Society who focuses on the prevention and treatment of cancer. They also provide facilities for people with cancer to live in and be surrounded with people just like them. They provide transportation to and from doctor's appointments, support groups where people can go and share their stories and really be heard by people who understand what they're going through, beauty supplies for women with cancer to feel more comfortable in their skin. We accept any kind of donations. The bags should be going around now. If you would like to be a part of Relay for Life or Madison East Key Club themselves, please contact Tim Rittman and 1027. And once again, thanks so much for donating. We really appreciate it. Softball tryouts start today in the field house at 4 p.m. All students are welcome to try out. Please make sure you have your blue card in order to practice. East High Annual Math Meet is Wednesday, March 16th at 3.45. Ask your math teacher if you're interested in participating. There is an application available in the Art and Guidance Department. Completed apps are due by the end of the school day on Friday, March 18th, 2016. Money for the award can be used for a tuition or fees for visual arts courses at a two-year or four-year college, fees for classes at a summer, evening, or weekend visual arts studio, fees for taking classes or making visual art at an art studio, expenses for visual arts work or study under an art teacher or other experienced artist, cost of equipment, supplies, or books needed for visual arts work or study. A final shout out to all the winter sports. Girls basketball finished fifth in conference and boys basketball made it to regional finals. Congrats to boys swim, boys and girls hockey, also cheer and dance teams. And a special shout out to Rachel and Celia Ramsey who both competed at the gymnastic state meet. This year's state meet, um, it was a really fun one because my sister was there too. And then like, a lot of our team came up so we had a lot of fun up there. Um, the meet itself was kind of funny, only Half of the events went really well, and then the other half just completely did not go well. So that was kind of, it was like an interesting meet, at least. Um, but yeah, so that was about it. And then my sister Rachel, she did, I mean, for a freshman, she was one of like two freshmen at the meet, so that was really exciting. And then um, she did two events, floor and vault, and I think they both went pretty well for her. So that was exciting, too. Speaking of sports, the wrestling team had a great season, too. Cortland has a story about one of our very own East High wrestlers. Michael Dunlap is a senior here at East High School. Recently, he made it to the state tournament at the Cole Center, where he competed against other top wrestlers in Wisconsin. We sat down with Mike to talk about his experience at state and his journey to the top. It felt real, it felt real good. I put a lot of work in the off season. It was just, it was just an amazing feel. Not a lot of people make it to East, make it to the state from East. It was just real exciting. Just after you win, you just look up and everybody's clapping for you. You just hear voices everywhere. My season went real well. I went 45 and 5. Those are a few matches that I lost, but you know, I took some out of it every time. Mike also demonstrated his favorite move in wrestling and gave thanks to his biggest supporters along his journey. It's the double leg. It's like a tackle in football. I'm going to just show y'all. So, like, first we shake hands, and then I tug at the tricep. I bring you towards. And then I <laughs> drop you. Yeah. 
My wrestling coaches are my biggest supporters, Coach Zerner, Coach Sean Hernandez, and Coach Kyle Lukey, and Coach Travis Spagel. And my mom always, for, for being there, always supported me and stuff. We also had the chance to speak with Sean Hernandez, the head wrestling coach at Madison East. Coach Hernandez has had the pleasure of following Coach Mike throughout his career. He spoke about his path and his season. Uh, he's a very unique wrestler. As I said, I had a chance to wrestle in his freshman year. He didn't know nothing coming on the mat. Uh, as a freshman, didn't win very many matches, but he won a couple. I was his JV coach then. Now I'm his head coach now. Um, he's came a long ways. It's kind of kind of hard to believe the spectrums on one end to the other that he made it. I mean, he was JV for three years in a row. Got a chance to shine, be varsity, and he, he took the spot over. First match didn't go the way we really wanted it to go. Things didn't look too right, but that was the most important match, so that's pretty much what knocked him out of being able to go into the finals round. But besides that, every other match he gave, I told him he wrestled the best, the best he's ever wrestled, the best I've ever seen. So he did, he ended the season a great way. Say keep on moving up, Mike. You know, I mean, he came a long ways. Anything comes in your way, man. It's, it's pretty much, you know, it's a mental mentality. You're gonna go as far as you really want to take yourselves. So if you believe, you know, you're done, and you believe you can't go any further in anything in life, that's all. That's that's your brain telling you that. You change that attitude. You change that mindset. The world is yours. You're ready to go. You just gotta be able to put the work in. Congrats, Mike, on a great season. We're proud of you. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Cortland, Israel, and Cameron. Jump man, jump man, jump man, man, them boys up to something. <laughs> so now we move on to some spring sports. Track practice started last Monday, softball starts today, and we have a new athletic director. Cameron has a chance to talk with Mr. Rognes. This winter, East hired a new athletic director, Mr. Rognes. You may have seen him around the halls, but I sat down with him to give him a formal introduction to the East High community. I'm married. I have two, two kids. I have a, a boy who is five years old and in kindergarten and a little girl who is eight years old and is in third grade. Um, I'm originally from Mankato, Minnesota. Mr. Rognes talks about what he did before he came to East. Well, for the seven years before I got here, I worked for MSCR, which is Madison School and Community Recreation. It's the community recreation provider in in Madison, um, I ran the adult uh, sports leagues. Uh, so those were the, the city softball leagues, city volleyball leagues, city basketball leagues. Being an athletic director, it's important that you have a background in sports. Mr. Rognes tells us about his. Well, um, I've always been an athlete. High school, I played three sports, football, wrestling, and baseball. Uh, I played two sports in college at Carleton College. Uh, I was a football and player, played, played cornerback. Uh, I played catcher and third base on the baseball team, okay. so um, athletics has always been very important to me. He also brings up his vision for East Athletics. Well, my vision for athletics uh, moving forward is I want East Athletics to be a place where anyone who wants an opportunity to, to play can have that opportunity. I want anyone who uh, is willing to do the work to be part of a team to have the opportunity to be part of a team. He also talks about what attracted him to interview for the job. Uh, it's an opportunity to continue working in sports. Uh, the opportunity here at East gives me a chance to get back to working with students, uh, which is something that I really enjoy. Um, another thing that attracted me uh, to this particular position is the tradition at East. Um, you know, it, it runs really deep. Um, when you meet some of the alums um, just in the hallways during school or after school at some of the games during booster meetings, um, people really feel strongly about their school, um, East High School, and um, I wanted to be a part of that. Mr. Rognes now tells us about his first impressions of East. First impression is that the people are great. Um, I've had so much fun just meeting everyone. Everyone seems to have so much energy in and out. Um, it's really been a lot of fun uh, to get back into a school setting. And um, I think East is an amazing place to, to start. I'm really looking forward to getting to know everyone in the building better and getting to become a real part of the community here. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Cameron and Israel. 
Hey Hannah, did you participate in the Day Without Latinos walkout a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I did. It was a great experience. Saudi got some footage of the day and I did some interviews too. Awesome. Let's watch. This walkout was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a student-led um, protest against some of the discriminatory laws that are trying to be put into place here in Wisconsin. The majority of the planning of the walkouts at East was done by the Latino Student Union and specifically Lupe Salmeron, a senior here at East. The Latino Student Union has been very, you know, involved with this, you know, because it, it was a big, it was a big controversial thing in Arizona when it happened. So when we heard it was, you know, at home, it was a very scary concept. Senior Bravo is a Spanish teacher here at East and walked out with the students back in February. It was, it was very powerful to see everybody come together. You know, those, um, they say 15,000, 20,000, it was very powerful. It, it, I mean, they say 15,000, 20,000, but it seemed like there was like 60,000. For many, this issue hits close to home. Personally, it meant, you know, finally coming out of the shadows. You know, as like a undocumented immigrant, you know, I've lived here for more than 13 years now. You know, like without the proper documentation, being able to like finally stand up for like what I believe in and like for my rights was very powerful. Power! 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 Power to the, people! The, the big thing that I'm walking, I walked out for was for my daughter. You know, um, you know, she's the product of you know a biracial marriage, and you know her features are more Latino, and so I think um, you know if you were to look at my daughter, you would associate her as being Latina because of her physical features and I don't want her growing up in a society or, or a culture where um, she's judged or she's looked upon with certain, um, I guess, just cer a certain judgment because of her skin or because of, of her last name, you know, and, and I, just don't, I just don't think that's right. The protests were not only to send a message, they also brought us closer together as a community. I was surprised at like the turnout. We planned this in what maybe five days, you know, and um, we released a press release um, the day before. Since we were like up front, we couldn't see how big it actually was, so we didn't know until the next day when we saw like the videos and pictures, and it was like really, really big. And yeah, we, we were pretty amazed and. I'm very happy. For me, it was very powerful to walk by, you know, my students, um, see them in different eyes, have them see me in a different eyes, you know, uh, protesting for something that um, we, you know, commonly think is wrong and, and it's not right, and, and um, you know, those things always unify um, people, and especially, you know. I think a, a student body like East, you know, needs a little bit more of that unity, you know, because we do have such a diverse um, population that I think sometimes we forget about what brings us together instead of what divides us. Speaking of walkouts, do you remember the Act 10 walkouts back in 2011? Yeah, that was huge. The teachers just did a walk-in as the anniversary for it last week. Let's hear more about it. Teachers planned the walk-in. Um, to remember the fifth anniversary of Act 10. Act 10 was a law that was passed in Wisconsin that took away collective bargaining rights from teachers, which means they can't join a union. It also um, slashed the public education budget in Wisconsin. And to date, um, $3 billion has been cut from Wisconsin education. One of the other reasons why we plan the walk-in at East is because uh, the social studies department really believes in teaching students how to stand up for themselves, whether that's um, against Act 10, whether that's in response to the death of Tony Robinson, whether that's the response to the immigration bill. Um, one of the things that makes East really unique is that we are an activist community, and um, it's important for teachers to model what we hope our students will do as adults. Have you met the new teacher, Ms. Wilcox, yet? No, but Josh has, and he's got the story. Wilcox Hall is a new teacher here at East. She teaches AP Environmental Science, Biology, and Biology Honors. In her first year of teaching, Ms. Wilcox worked at a rural school in Belleville. Working at Belleville, the class sizes were much smaller mm -hmm. than here, so I was able to get to know actually an entire class because 
like the whole sophomore class that I taught, there were 70 people. Whereas here it's about 450. She then explained how her teaching styles hasn't changed from working at a rural school to an urban school. We did block schedule in Belleville. So um, I only taught three classes a day and here I teach five. So I see a lot more students throughout the day. Um, uh, so I also get to know a lot more students than I did in Belleville, um, but it's a lot more fast paced. I, I think um, have just, I know I keep emphasizing the classes, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm a new teacher, so this is my second year teaching overall. So I'm still getting my style of teaching down, but I feel like the way I taught there isn't any different than I teach here. Like I still interact with the kids the same way. I do the same types of lessons. Um, so I don't say I wouldn't say I teach. I have to teach any different. It's just I have to adapt to the amount of kids in each class versus. Miss Wilcox likes working at East. She wants to be here for the foreseeable future. Um, I like working at East because it is my, it's like, it's my community, it's my home. Whereas in Belleville it was, it was 45 minutes away. Um, and I, I got to know people, but I really wanted to commit to a community. And I've been on the, I've been an East Sider for eight years. I've lived in Madison for about 12 years. And I just really wanted to, and that's the whole reason why I became a teacher, is to be able to being more involved with the community and being here at East is like, that's the epitome of it, is being able to know know the people that are in the community and, and like really commit to it. So, definitely, <laughs> yeah. Um, my daughter's five. I plan on teaching here when she's attending school here in 10 years. So I, I'll, I plan on being around for a while. <laughs> in conclusion, Ms. Wilcox is a valuable asset to our East Side community. Signing out for Tower TV, this is Josh Graham. Ugh, East is really killing me lately. Maybe it's just senioritis, but it's so hard to learn. Yeah, well, spring break is going to help with that. And alternative schools are always an option. Really? How do they work? Well, Celia has some more information about the alternative high school Shabazz. Some students at East have looked for a more alternative education and have switched to Shabazz, an alternative high school here in Madison. We talked to some students who split their time between East and Shabazz. Um, I decided to go to Shabazz originally because um, I had kind of a hard time with traditional learning styles and like, I guess, like testing. I thought their like educational system would probably work better for me, and it has. Students who decide to split days need to navigate the challenges of being at two different schools in the same day. I have my first three classes at Shabazz, and then I go my third hour to the bus station and then take the bus over to East for lunch and have fifth and sixth hour here and then I go home. Um, currently I'm taking um, a class about discrimination which is just like a social studies type of class and a math class and um, a class that teaches about like confidence and competence and like women, women empowerment. There are many differences between East and Shabazz. Teachers have a lot more freedom in what they teach so they can teach things that they're really passionate about and that the students are really interested in learning and a lot of classes are more discussion based and more about independent learning and flexible in the curriculum. And just like the community like there's um, a really good sense of community there like every Friday we have these community lunches like a class will cook lunch for everyone and then we'll just all eat together which is really cool. For many, the alternative education offered at Shabazz fits the student's learning style better. For me, it feels like I'm actually like really learning things that I want to and that I'm interested in. Um, I would say just like in general the way it's taught, we, we rarely have tests and quizzes. We um, usually have projects to show like to, in place of tests and um, the class sizes are much smaller. Splitting days offers a compromise between traditional and alternative education. This means that students can receive the benefits from both schools and gain a more versatile and well-rounded education. Signing out for Tower TV, this is Celia Lunar. Man, I wish I was good enough to be on our basketball team. They're flame. Well, you could always do MSCR basketball like some kids here. That's true. Dylan has some more info about MSCR and one of our great teams called the Tame Cats.
the most prestigious team in MSCR League. Team Cats. Really, what does it take to be anything these days? You gotta be rough, you gotta be tough, and you gotta be soft, a little bit, a little soft. Uh, first of all, we start off with high percentage shooting, uh, strong dribbling, um, ability to finish at the rim. It doesn't take work. It takes a level of commitment. Commitment you find from within, and you find in your teammates. Conditioning is a big part of it. Every day we run for one hour, we stretch for three hours. It's brutal. You know, just listen to your coach and the plays he tells you, and just, you know, everything you learned is, you know, a peewee playing basketball. You gotta just remember all, all, the, all the fundamentals, the basics. We put the fun in fundamentals. Uh, you know, back in France, I was top of the league, best player. I was just, I had it all. And I've been searching for this challenge, and I heard of this league, the MSCR Basketball League in the Ten Cats. And here I am today. Some say I'm the reincarnation of John Stockton. I agree, because of my ability to go coast to coast. I was guarding Michael Jordan, he went up for a dunk. No one really matches up to our stamina, speed, skill, uh, or determination to win. We prefer milk over water on the sidelines. Just dominating every other team in the league. Yeah, man, I even I even shave my head. To me, it's for the aerodynamics around the court. I'd like to say I'm the tamest of the cats, overall. The Lord said that there'd be basketball. Created me. <laughs> Being part of the most prestigious team in the MSCR Basketball League comes with a lot of responsibility. Dribbling's for losers, dude. <laughs> Dribbling's for losers. My favorite part about being a tame cat is watching Zane sink threes. It's another one of the, one of life's miracles. MSCR is really fun. <laughs> Gotta love it though. We hope to see you next year on the court. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Dunkmaster D Tops. Well, that's all we have today. Have a great week, East High. And we'll see you on the flip side.